How you doing YouTube? This is Chris Mizo here with another video and Pat Gelsinger. Man oh man, Intel wants to come back with a vengeance and they ain't playing no games. Not only is Pat Gelsinger saying that they're coming back stronger than ever, but that they're going to have plenty of supply for chips, especially for those processors that you're looking so hard to build your PC with. But there is one problem. Every manufacturer that mentions this always says that they have this very solution to where they will not have a problem with supply. You look at every other manufacturer such as Nvidia, AMD, even Intel has run into these very issues. But will they fulfill what they say or are their words just filled with air? But make sure you stick around and wait till you hear what Intel has to say because it really gets interesting. But first, if you find this video very useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you're into tech content and you love PC stuff and you want to join the big wonderful fam, man, all you have to do is go down and hit that subscribe button down below. Let's get straight into it because I know you want to hear exactly what Intel has to say and if they have what it takes to compete against AMD. Is it too late for Intel? Or do you still have faith in them? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below because I love to hear from you guys, especially the fan bam. PCI Express 5.0, DDR5, a plethora of next gen specs. And it sounds so good to be true. Is it really too good to be true? I'll tell you what, it definitely had my attention. I'm pretty sure it grabbed your attention, especially if you're looking to build a PC and you wanna future proof it. Now this is all inside of Elder Lake, of course, because they ain't gonna have DDR5 or PCI Express 5.0 anytime soon. This is one step ahead of Rocket Lake. This very CPU is supposed to be available not only for desktops, but it's also available for laptops as well. This will be Intel's first 10 nanometer chip as it will make their 14 nanometer chips practically obsolete. And the crazy part is Rocket Lake is just about to get released and I don't think it's gonna have very high demand because it's not gonna be everything that everybody's looking for. Look at these wonderful specs that Alder Lake does claim. All right, fam bam. So right here we got videocards.com and they are the providers of this very leak. Now Alder Lake does perform up to 20% better single thread performance, two times multi-thread performance, as you can see all the details here. Of course, if you want to see more details about Alder Lake's CPU architecture, I'll have it down in the description box down below. Also, as you can see, they feature up to DDR5-4800. They even do uh, feature legacy DDR4-3200, uh, which is pretty cool, which is amazing. So it sounds like it, it is backwards compatible in some sort of way, which is something that's new. Now we, it does feature a PCI Express 5.0 and it does also p feature PCI Express 4.0. The new 600 series motherboards will feature also a new socket type called LGA 1700. Right here we got some of these predicted release dates. Hopefully they stay true to what they say. But of course with shortages and everything I do find everything to be delayed in some sort of way i do see everything being delayed maybe for another quarter or so so don't expect i wouldn't expect this to come out so quickly and if you're looking to build a next gen system or a future proof pc system i would suggest to wait at least till the end of this year it does throw up a few red flags for me and it does throw some of these very questions that i do have First off, we don't really have any solid information or we haven't really heard anybody trying to push out PCI Express 5.0 on anything, whether it's SSD, NVMe, or Nvidia's GPUs. So it kind of defeats that fact of it. We heard of DDR5 trying to be pushed out, but of course it got canceled last year when they were going to try to push that out. But there's no real solid evidence of that. So it does make me question 
or maybe they have something up their sleeves, especially with everything that's going on when we have all these shortages. AMD is way ahead of the curve as it is because it took time for them to get there. But I'm not here to ramble on about AMD and I'm not trying to be biased on either subject. But of course, we're familiar with Intel's 14 nanometer chips. Intel will come out with this new 10 nanometer chip, which is Rocket Lake. And we haven't even gotten our feet wet with that just yet. Wait till that's tested. And I'm pretty sure it may run into a few issues itself, whether it's heat dissipation, which I really highly doubt because Intel's actually pretty good with that. It does promise to run PCI Express 4.0 and they did have to borrow some of the technology actually from AMD. So it does beg the question to wonder exactly if 10 nanometer will really pave the way here because this is something new to Intel and this is something that they're experimenting with. There is gonna be a learning curve for them. There is one thing that most manufacturers cannot resolve. That includes Nvidia, AMD. They do have a solution for this shortage problem we do have. Which brings me to my next most important point that you fan bam guys have to hear. Pat Gelsinger. Yeah, I like this guy. But hopefully he's not as sleazy as the last guy that was in place because Intel turned into more of a sales pitch than an actual tech company. I, I hate to admit it, but uh, personally, I always liked Intel. I always thought they were the top. Of course, they were at the time, and AMD was practically forgotten about, but you see what happens. True technology always does prevail. So will Intel have what it takes to prove that? And of course, everybody that's been building PCs long enough, or if you're new to building PCs, Intel has been around for generations and you've probably seen it when you're growing up or you've been using a PC that you haven't even realized did have an Intel Pentium processor inside of it. That's right, I did say Pentium because who can forget those processors? The problem with Intel over the years, they turned into more of a sales company and we've just been lied to way too much. I mean, how does a prior gen processor perform better than a next gen processor from Intel? So you have problems that you run into like that. And now Pat Gelsinger is there to help fix those very problems. So again, let's get back to the supply issue because Pat Gelsinger does want to resolve it. He wants to add two more Intel labs in Arizona because they Intel are always had a lab in Arizona as it is, but he wants to add two other ones. Sure, this may resolve the supply issue, but how much is it going to exactly cost? The CEO of Intel wants to spend $20 billion on this project. In my personal opinion, I think it is a great investment because this is something that you can get out there widespread. Even if there isn't enough AMD chips and Intel is still under demand, at least they will actually have the supply to give out to everybody because everybody that is looking to build a PC or trying to buy a pre-built PC that this processor will be available. Now, if you spend $20 billion for an investment, you wanna make sure it works. Of course, it may not happen right away. So that leads me into the very next topic, exactly how long will this project take? Wait till you hear this. But first off, I gotta let you know what Pat Gelsinger had said, quote unquote, having 80% of all supply in Asia simply isn't a palatable matter for the world to have its view of the most critical technology. See, the problem here is that Intel themselves also rely on TSMC to be able to help them create chipsets. I believe it's about seven to eight percent. That is a rough estimate. Just trying to remember off the top of my head. And of course, TSMC is not the only semiconductor out there, but there are other ones such as Samsung. Now, Samsung does also want to expand in the US and they just don't want to build two labs. They want to build four labs. They already have one chipset lab in Austin, Texas. They want to build one next to it. They also want to build a lab in Houston, Texas. And they also want to build a lab in New York. And of course, they want to build a lab at Intel's home, which is Arizona. They want to build a lab in Arizona. Can you believe that? It kind of reminds you of Anchorman when the different media outlets kind of get into a fight with each other, almost like gang fights. Wait till you get Intel and Samsung fighting each other. 
If you guys didn't know, Samsung also helps produce chipsets for Nvidia, which is for their 30 series cards. That's right, their most recent cards they also help provide. They also have contracts with Qualcomm, which is a processor that everybody uses practically in their phone in the US. Um, there is another company that is willing to contract them, which is Tesla. But to get to the point, when is Intel actually gonna build these two labs? And Intel does promise to have these labs finished building by 2024, same as their eight nanometer chip sets. Sounds kind of ridiculous, right? If it's 2024, you know who's gonna be well ahead of the curve as it is. I'll make sure to leave a card right above my head to let you guys know exactly what AMD also does have in plan. Will Intel ever be a viable competitor in the CPU world again? The truth is that Intel did end up destroying themselves. They do make great quality chipsets and there's nothing wrong with their processors. Matter of fact, they still build one of the best gaming processors out there that you can get for gaming PCs, but Intel destroyed its reputation just by lying to the public, which hurt them the most. I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy content just like this, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell and to make sure you follow all my social media outlets by this handle right here. And it's not only in Twitter, it's on TikTok and IG too. And guys, Bam Bam, what do you think about Intel's plans? Do you think Intel will have what it takes to compete against AMD ever again? Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.